Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. Let's have a look at what's happening for the rest of this very busy Star Citizen week. We've got the return of Xenothreat and Cloud Imperium's news shows, a roadmap update, and we're going to take a deeper look at the latest PTU patch as we plod towards 3.16.1 live. Almost certainly at the end of this week, along with the Xeno Threat, and we've got some interesting dev responses. What happens if a player dies in real life with their account? Let's start with the rest of the week's schedule, though. Uh, we've already had a Galactopedia update with a focus on ships, star systems, and planet entries. Later on Wednesday, we have the long-awaited first roadmap update of the year for 2022. Hopefully, this is going to give us a much better indication of what's likely to make Alpha 3.17 and 3.18, as well as focuses for other features for the rest of the year. So, bam! I'm hoping it's not just a little tiny mini one going, we're working on an update for the roadmap. I, I need to see um, what's actually happening for 3.17 because 3.17's sort of rough release date is at the end of March. Um, so let's hope that's a thing. Uh, Thursday, Inside Star Citizen returns with a look at the new derelicts coming online in Alpha 3.16.1 and a glimpse of what we can expect in the future and a sprint report. I've missed Inside Star Citizen. Sprint reports are great because they show a big cross-section of work that's sort of going on. And yeah, it's going to be a little look at 3.16.1, as we could probably expect. And a hopefully we're going to see some more of what's going on on 3.17. Friday, we've got Star Citizen Live again. And this is going to follow on from Inside Star Citizen with a special game dev episode where senior concept artist Frederick Duper. I have no idea if I've said your name right, and I apologise to anyone that has uh, been adversely affected by my pronunciation. Uh, we'll create a new derelict concept from scratch with input from the viewers on the Star Citizen Twitch channel at 6pm UTC. Also, Xenothreat 3.0 returns on that day or Friday too, so um, you can expect 3.16.1 at the same time or before, and the release of that new hover vehicle, um, that hover quad it's called, from Consolidated Outland. Yeah, so uh, there might be some other things as well. There might be some little hidden boys, little secrets, little um, un unannounced things that might turn up in that patch as well. Um, but you can expect a little tiny mini sale because it's Xenothreat 3.0. Combat ships, they go, bam, yeah, we like to do these. You've got the, the hover quad, which is going to be a great lifetime insurance token almost certainly. Although um, it is... A little interesting. We'll come on to that, actually. Uh, so let's take a look at the latest PTU patch 3.16.1G. Uh, this patch included a consolidated hover quad polish pass. They adjusted the um, flare amount, so how many flare sort of countermeasures it has, and thruster and wind volumes as well. Uh, and uh, this came along with a VFX polish pass for landing and wake dust. So this stuff's looking a bit prettier and more balanced now. That consolidated Outland bike, though, Clan Imperium have said the hover quad should have similar operational and use properties to other hover bikes, the Dragonfly Nox, but sacrifices weapons and shields to gain some utility in the form of inventory storage, which can be accessed at the rear of the hover quad. The compact size as well of it, uh, and sort of like it has a better strafe maneuverability. And uh, personally, I'm much more of a fan of the Dragonfly. It's got guns. It's got two seats. It's got, it's got sort of cargo. It's got it all. And it doesn't really make any um, sacrifices there. But um, we should see that um, ship, as I said, that bike on sale by the end of the week. And if you want to see more on that hover quad, uh, take a look at my first look video. There was yet another derelict polish pass for vis areas and ground collisions uh, where players could get stuck. Um, so bam, yeah, derelicts looking good now. Um, we should start to see them a lot more in 3.6.1 live and utilised much more for missions. So bug fix wise, they fixed an issue causing player hydration and nutrition not to deplete properly. Uh, laser trip mines found within derelicts should now exp um, correctly explode and actually deal damage. Uh, they fixed an issue that allowed players to gain much more than intended speeds while flying at the hover bike in space. Um, they fixed an issue that caused players to have ships classified as hostile and sort of like bypass the law system um, when they were attacking them. The hover quad thruster glow um, wasn't illuminating and that's sort of fixed properly now. Uh, they fixed this area issues in the hammerhead uh, with the portal leading to the main elevator room uh, and the sideway hall. Um, I'm hoping that they also fix the uh, 
problems where you get locked in turrets in the Hammerhead uh, in the live version of this patch. They fixed some mining problems with the collectible diamond icon appearing when it shouldn't, uh, and they fixed a client crash. There was also a little hotfix deployed on the sort of live server environment uh, that addressed some minor service issues. And there are a number of known issues that still need to be dealt with for the patch. Service not updating, mission offerings, desync, scanning asteroids, bunker missions, um, not completing. Uh, the vehicle manager app gets broken, uh, resupplying at low orbit stations doesn't work, and ship despawning uh, when a player dies um, are some of the major offenders. Now, these are not ideal. All of those ones I've mentioned there, they're pretty big, and, and they need to be solved before a live patch, almost certainly. Um, so let's hope they get them solved in the next couple of days uh, before Friday, because I think Friday is a hard sort of release date. Uh, Zero Threat 3.0 has been being tested occasionally for a few hours at a time in the last few PTU patches, and we can expect 3.16 point live and Xeno Threat 3.0 by Friday or on Friday, uh, as that is when the Xeno Threat sort of event is scheduled now and this week in Star Citizen. It's my favorite event updated, and I'm really looking forward to playing it in an improved manner. More to that, there were actually some specific fixes uh, for Xenothreat in the last PTU um, with fixing issues uh, with players causing the Javelin to be classified as hostile to Jericho, which was odd. Uh, uh, an issue that allowed players to EVA into the INS Jericho docking arm uh, and then access the uh, Javelin there. Uh, they fixed the Javelin failing to carry out the correct Quantum animation when quantum traveling away, and they fixed screens in the spaceports and them being appropriately hijacked by Xenothreat at the right times during the event. Something I wanted to mention here is a couple of weeks ago as well, there was a listing for CitizenCon 2022 at the Petrie uh, Plaza, Los Angeles, in, in the Americas, um, on the 24th of September. This was then shown as postponed uh, on, and then this was all on like a little events website rather than sort of like a major announcement or anything. I just thought it was worth mentioning because it's something I'm almost certainly going to reference in the future. Um, I would expect CitizenCon to be mid-October where possible, and when you see things like this potentially listed on websites, it's because Plan Imperium may have inquired about advertising there or doing an event there isn't necessarily a sort of confirmation of event is going to be running there or whatever. So I just bear that in mind. A very interesting post that I saw on Spectrum was from user Caden uh, um, asking, what measures can you take in the event of backer's death to pass their account on, basically? Uh, another response later down in the thread said that they had a brother pass away and that they had reached out to Clan Imperium several times, but Clan Imperium had then gutted this old hanger and then said, oh yeah, you, you can have um, the, the handle, though, if you spend $5 uh, to change your name, we've sort of freed up the handle, basically saying that they had deleted the account, is what I can discern from the thread. However, Reddit then apparently gave the chap that lost his brother's account a starter ship and game package, but basically, the user said that Cloud Imperium didn't help them and in fact deleted everything. However, I know this not to be the norm and to be relatively unlikely. I'm not saying this person is, is incorrect. Um, entirely because I don't know the full context. However, I know that Cloud Imperium are, are supposed to be able to pass on accounts and things. So, so Cloud Imperium Xylo responded, I'd appreciate hearing more information about the experience you had. Our support team has a pretty good rigid process for these type of cases in which they can go through steps to transfer account ownership when provided with appropriate documentation. In no situation would they have ever taken the steps that you've outlined, which is why I'd like to investigate personally. I've looked through your support history and don't see anything related to this, but I see that you've mentioned this happened to an alt account of yours. If you can direct message me additional information, I'd be happy to help. And so it's good to know that Clan Imperium have reached out for more feedback on this publicly. And I haven't heard of this happening in this way before. Um, uh, certainly not from the position of the um, player there. Um, I think that's, um, if, if that has happened in that case, I think it's probably a miscommunication or... Yeah, something else weird has happened there. Hopefully it was a one-off if it is something that Cloud Imperium have done wrong. That just, it, it seems a bit crazy. But yeah, it, it, more um, importantly, hopefully there is a way for people to pass on their accounts. Can you imagine an org leader passing away where he's got control of all of the org ships and then it's just gone? Like maybe they've got $50,000, $100,000 worth of ships and that, could that account be deleted? That would be absolute madness and I don't think that happens at all. But yeah, it's just, it was just an interesting conversation point. I would go like, you know what? There's a lot of money flying around this game, and obviously Star Citizen's not complete yet, so um, it's sort of occasionally worth talking about. But boom, 
that's it for your dose of Star Citizen news today. I'm very much looking forward to that roadmap update, but also Alpha 3.16.1 and Xeno Threat. It is a busy week indeed, but what do you think? Have you been playing the 3.16.1 PTU and trying out those new derelicts or playing Xeno Threat 3.0? Is it fun, broken, or, or are you waiting for it to be live? What are you expecting to move out of Alpha 3.17 or be added? What, what do you think is going to happen? Is it going to be a great year for Star Citizen? Is it going to be uh, a slow and plotty year and uh, potentially but partly because of the new studios and um, sort of new hires coming online? Um, what do you think of that new hover quad bike? What have your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What is best in life? To crush your enemies? To see them driven before you? And to hear the lamentations of their women? No, of course not. It's NordVPN. I never saw Conan the Barbarian checking his bank balance and then watching some cool shows on Netflix, all while protecting his privacy and being super secure. To be honest, I can't even remember Conan wearing a shirt. Silly Conan. And now, a big old snake god's got your internet history. Good job. Don't be a Conan the Barbarian. Check out NordVPN. Links below for powerful discounts too. Every month we have a ship giveaway for January 2022. It's for a Drake Cutlass Steel, a light assault dropship variant of the Cutlass. Perfect for attacking Jumptown and similar narcotic processing areas. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that Star Citizen ship is comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details down below. If you would like to further support the channel, consider clicking the join button under my videos or becoming a Patreon. Comments, suggestions, likes and shares all help the channel massively too, so always feel welcome to share your opinion or feedback. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the verse.